Welcome to another edition of Wednesdays at 3. I'm Danielle Bowden with the Realtors Association of the Palm Beaches and I'm here today with Shane Weaver. Um, Shane is with the Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County and uh, he works under, um, he's the staff attorney for the Fair Housing Project. Welcome Shane, thank, thank you, you for being here today. Glad to be here. Thank you. Shane's also given some um, classes here at the association. TV we have in the archive and he's going to talk a little bit about of the things that they handle there at the Legal Aid Society. So tell our members a little bit about what the Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County does. Sure. The uh, Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County is a free legal service for lower income individuals. Um, generally it's I think 150 percent of the federal poverty level but some of the programs have some uh, you know leeway on the income requirement. There is I think uh, 10 or 11 different individual projects within the Legal Aid Society that handle a variety of different uh, legal needs. Uh, just a few of them, I mean, there's immigration, domestic violence, uh, family law, um, we help uh, seniors in various ways, there's a lot of uh, advocacy for children, foster children, and again, my unit is uh, the uh, Fair Housing Project. Okay, so that is your specialization there, right. the Fair Housing Project? Right, and what that is, is uh, we specialize in um, cases of housing discrimination. Mm -hmm. Um, as part of my uh, grant, I also do some foreclosure defense and uh, landlord-tenant work and some other property matters, but primarily it is uh, uh, either def it's, uh, fair housing discrimination claims either that we bring as an affirmative type of a lawsuit or you know, sometimes we're in a defensive position where we raise those as defenses to something being done to the client. Okay. And um, just to um, give our members a little overview of what the Fair Housing Act entails, uh, the Fair Housing Act, uh, it's a federal law, there's also a state version that mirrors the federal law, and then there's a Palm Beach County version. What it does is it prohibits discrimination based on a variety of what's called protected classes. Mm -hmm. Those are um, characteristics about a person, um, they include um, race, age, national origin, religion, uh, there's I think ten of them, and, or seven of them in, under federal law. Then there's another four added under Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County, on top of everything else, you can't discriminate based on uh, age, um, uh, gender identity or expression, uh, sexual orientation, or marital status. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the law says is, I mean, there's a variety of things you can't do. I mean, besides you know, simply denying someone the opportunity to rent or buy a dwelling, I mean, you also can't give them different terms or conditions. You can't steer them to one property versus another. Um, you can't uh, do. You can't print advertisements that might indicate you have a preference to, towards someone based on one of those protected classes. So, you know, there's a, a host of things that are, um, you know, governed by a law. Mm -hmm. And so, how does that impact our realtors? What happens if they? Well, it's obviously important to realtors because um, you know they're kind of on the front lines representing people who may be um, either. Uh, in possible, uh, you know, possibly violating the law or are getting affected by violations of it. So it's really important that they kind of understand that, you know, what the law entails. Um, you know, they have to know, for example, that you have, when you, when I mentioned the publications, you have to advertise in a certain way. You can't use certain phrases that would indicate the preference. You, know, you have to know that. Um, um, and on the other side, if, if uh, let's say you're getting approval for your client through an association and they do something that might violate it, you kind of it's a good idea to be aware of, um, you know, something that might affect your client adversely and create a fair housing claim. Right. And uh, we do, we represent realtors. It's not like, um, you know, it's legal aid on one side and realtors on the other. I mean, we work together. We've had cases where we've represented realtors, you know, where their client lost out on the chance to rent or sell or buy housing because of something that someone did that was discriminatory, whether it's uh, an owner, whether it's a community association, mm -hmm. you know, we've actually represented them on that. To so try to help them get their commission? Right. And, you know, also to try to stop the bad housing practice. Right. But, um, you know, we, we, you know, we can help the people who are denied the people, you know, for example, we've represented people who, people actually own the home and they were denied the opportunity to rent to someone, you know, they have a claim too. It's not just the person who's actually denied. Mm. Uh, so, you know, we're, we, we can, um, take in a wide variety of cases and certainly help realtors if they've been affected by it. Right, that's good to know. And um, you mentioned also the uh, Protecting Tenants Act. Um, yes, I mentioned before, that's um, 
part of, uh, again, part of my work involves uh, landlord-tenant cases, and that is um, specifically the Protecting Tenants at Foreclosure Act, the uh, PTFA for short, because it's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a federal law passed in 09 that governs what happens to tenants once a property changes hands through foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, the way it used to work is that when somebody takes over property through a foreclosure sale, that wipes out a lease. But because there were, you know, there's such a foreclosure crisis and so many tenants are being affected by that, mm -hmm. that the government passed a law that says now that um, whoever takes title to that foreclosed property has to either honor the terms of the a written lease, if there is one, you know, whatever's left on it, or if it's a month-to-month -month unwritten type lease, then they have to give 90 days before the tenant has to get out. Mm -hmm. And there's some other requirements, but that's that's the, the you know that's the nutshell version. So there's no more of the tenant comes home and the doors are locked and the house is foreclosed. No, they would have to um, they have to serve a 90 day notice under any circumstance. They have to give at least 90 days a written notice that you know hey tenant um, this is the end you know 90 days from now you have mm -hmm. to move out. That's good. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I heard some horror stories about that. Yeah, it, it can be... Uh, Tenants that didn't even know that their landlord was well, in foreclosure. Unfortunately, that's the case a lot of times because you have landlords who probably know they're not going to be able to save the property, but they're not exactly announcing that to the tenants. So right. I mean, they would rent properties and not bother to tell the tenant. The first thing they find out is when they get like a judgment or a yeah. motion in the mail. Yeah. So at least they're protected to some extent. That's good. And um, what should our members know about the this act um, specifically? Well, again, the um, important thing is the 90 days notice. Under no circumstances can a tenant um, be uh, evicted without that 90 day notice. They have to. Um, they should also know that uh, the tenant, uh, the the rent actually has to be not substantially below market value. So if um, you know if a, if the Realtor, let's say, is helping someone rent out a home that's in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. You know, they represent the landlord. Then you're going to want to advise them to you know, set the rent at a rate that's market market value, or else that lease is going to be invalidated and the tenant's going to be in a bad spot later mm -hmm. on. Um, you know, they should also know that um, um, you know when they serve these notices, again, it has to be in writing 90 days beforehand. Um, even if you've got a written lease, when the written lease ends, it, the tenant isn't automatically out. You still would have had to have given them the 90-day notice 90 days before the lease ends. Otherwise, they, they continue. Huh. So there's some, you know, there's some tricky spots for somebody who's on the, you know, on the side of the new owner. Right. And on the flip side, if it's a realtor representing, let's say, somebody who's trying to uh, rent housing, obviously they want to be aware of whether the property is in foreclosure. I mean, that goes without saying. Right. But, you know, if the property is in foreclosure, then at least they'd be able to advise the tenant, well, you know, if the worst happens and your landlord loses the property, you know, this is what will happen to you. you know, you'll have, at a minimum, 90 days. You know, possibly have the entire term of your written lease. Right. So it's a way they can really you know, help a, a client of theirs make a decision on whether to rent a property. Very true. It's good to be informed and <laughs> to be able to give information to your client like that. Um, and so if our members do have questions or they feel that they maybe have been affected or their client has been affected by um, either of these two acts, how would they be, they be able to get a hold of you and ask some questions? Um, they can call legal aid again for their clients to free legal service and you know sometimes people will just call with questions, we're happy to answer it even if we're not you know taking a case. Um, legal aid's number is 561-655-8944, uh, again that's just our main switchboard, they can ask for fair housing, I mean if it's one of those area, other areas that I mentioned, you know, domestic violence, immigration, anything else, they can just call and ask about that as well. Um, if they've got questions specific to foreclosure, which I know is a big topic, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure a lot of your members are dealing with that, um, we actually have a hotline specifically for people who need help with a foreclosure situation, and that's the same number, 655-8944, extension 325. So 325 gets you the hotline number for if somebody's in foreclosure, and then we'll set up an appointment for them. Great. And uh, do you have a website that they can go to to find out more about the legal aid? Yes, it is legalaidpbc.org, which I'll Great. spell legal aid, L E G A L A I D, PBC for Palm Beach County, dot org. Dot org. And okay. it, it explains some of our pro programs and um, yes, our, our uh, requirements for uh, an application and uh, our contact information, it's all there. That's great. Um, so it's a great group to contact, and, and like you said, they, they'll even answer your question if they don't take your case. So it's a great place to go. That's what they're for. Yeah, yeah, and call and ask questions. Um, we thank you, Shane, for being sure. here today. And uh, make sure you contact Shane if you have any, if you, you are questioning, you may be involved, or your client may be involved in uh, Fair Housing Act. Um, 
and you can have all of your questions answered there. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again next week with another edition of Wednesdays at 30. Thank you.